everyone welcome back to the strawberry lily channel i feel like it's been literally forever since i have been able to film a makeup related video and that ends today okay i really don't care how many other people or obligations are vying for my attention and time i am the first priority this channel is a priority and so that's that's the direction that we're gonna go in, okay? Just two updates if you're wondering why I've been a little MIA. It's nothing exciting, but number one, I've just been slammed with work. The sudden influx of projects that my team has gotten over the past two weeks has, has me doing like three jobs for the price of one not cool and then secondly allergy season this year in japan or at least in tokyo has been particularly intense i think they said that there's like just a higher pollen count than usual this year which makes sense because i feel like i just really really have been going through it with the allergies for mostly all of february and march not just me but all my friends and co-workers have been echoing the same thing i literally felt like i had a different face every week because of these allergies like one week my nose would be super swollen and puffy the next week it would be my eyes that also contributed to me feeling not so keen to come on camera if i'm gonna be completely honest but this week finally um i would say starting with the beginning of april i feel like it's finally starting to calm down a little bit and i actually feel like my face itself has finally gone back to normal you know i've also been doing intermittent fasting for um i want to say two weeks hold on i track my fasts on this app every single day okay 15 days so today would be the 16th day straight that i've been able to stick with my new intermittent fasting regimen which i'm really really proud of and i'm probably going to make a video on that sometime in the future i mean i can feel the results physically already um in my body and my energy levels I feel a lot less bloated every day and I do feel like it already has had some sort of effect on my face. Again, combined with the pollen count finally going down a little bit it seems this month, I do feel like my face has been less swollen. And so with that being said, that's why I want to seize this opportunity to try out some new makeup products that I've picked up lately. So first up is this new foundation product from Maybelline. It's called the Fit Me tint at first i thought this was a bb cream but it just says that it's a tint and it's infused with vitamin c i caught wind of this a few months ago when i saw that it released in a few select southeast asian countries so ever since then i have been waiting very impatiently for this to come to japan and i'm glad it's finally here unfortunately i do think that this is an asia only release as you can tell by the abysmal shade range i got the shade 01 i'm actually super excited about this next item that i'm going to apply this with and that would be this beauty spatula thing this one is not the exact one that went viral i think that one is from a korean beauty brand this one i got off of shein for i think it was like 200 yen i got this a few weeks ago and ever since i started using this it has been such a game changer for me this opened my eyes up to how little product you truly need to cover your entire face of course the amount will vary a little bit depending on the actual formula of the foundation or whatever you use some are thicker than others but overall ever since i started using this spatula on the days that i do wear foundation i notice that i never have to go over two drops like two pumps max that is plenty to cover your entire face and since this already spreads the product out for you to the thinnest possible layer it requires less work to blend in as well listen to me going on and on without even applying this to my face yet um i just want to quickly test the formula oh my god i really like this smell this has a very very nostalgic fresh makeup type of smell it smells like lotion from my childhood probably from cvs okay so this is pretty a pretty thin consistency it looks to be semi sheer as you can see so i think there's obviously going to be more focus on the skincare and dewy natural looking aspect so yeah i'm literally just going to put that much on each side of my face and then watch this Look at how that product just spreads and spreads and spreads. This is all you need for your entire face, you guys. We should not be, you know, caking on layers and layers of foundation, clogging our pores and not letting our skin properly breathe. No, 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 we're done with all of that. And then just take my sponge and blend out really only the edges. I don't really have to mess with most of it because it's already such a thin layer. Like the spatula has already done its job there by spreading it as thin as possible. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. This is like the perfect finish. I was afraid it would be a little bit too dewy for my taste, but it's just, it has just enough of a tiny bit 
of a matte quality to it um, it's not a matte formula but no this is giving me like fresh hydrated glowy skin without being too dewy next I'm gonna do my brows with this new dual ended she glam brow pencil that I picked up so on one end we have a classic cream twist up pencil and then on the other hand is a brush applicator for drawing in those individual eyebrow hairs if you are lacking like I happen to be so what I usually do with this is I will draw in I will fill in the general shape of my eyebrow first and then I'll go back in later and just draw in a few hairs with the brush end on the areas that I feel like need to be accentuated to be honest I'm really not like skilled at that technique yet of drawing in fake eyebrow hairs so I try to not go too overboard with that. I just do what I'm comfortable with. Okay, just popping things off with a little bit of eyebrow mascara. And we are good to go with the brows. So far, I have been really, really enjoying this She Glam eyebrow pencil, pen pencil duo. It's not quite as natural as my RMK powder that I usually use but I wanted to get something really quick cheap and efficient for my upcoming trip to Egypt later at the end of this month which I'm so excited for I'm gonna go on a 10-day tour with my mom and yeah practicality wise this really really fits the bill it's a little bit of a waxy formulation the pencil side kind of reminds me of this older Maybelline eyebrow pencil that I used to use that was like really really waxy looking back I don't know why I used to use that pencil so often because it looked very very greasy and waxy this doesn't look quite as waxy as that Maybelline one more of a natural feel to it but I will say that um, the waxiness of the formula don't take a sip every time I say waxy I think it does help the product glide on effortlessly and not move around so like I said practicality wise efficiency wise this is one of those items that has been working out really well for me it was really really affordable too I think only like 300 or 400 yen which is way cheaper than any other similar type of dual eyebrow pencil that you can find in the Japanese drugstore here okay now it is time to do the eyes I don't have any new eyeshadow palettes or anything to show you guys so we're gonna speed through this part lately I've been in a very reddish mood with the eyeshadow so I'm gonna use my Pat McGrath Celestial Nirvana palette look at me using my expensive things so proud of myself I usually just take a mixture of these two shades right here the brighter red and a deeper burgundy I darken up the um, you know the places that need more definition with this darker burgundy shade and then I top it off with this rose gold shimmer right here which is super silvery on screen but it's like a like in between a rose gold and coppery shade it works really well with these two shades so i'm using the tone activator primer from kaleidos Okay, I said I had no new eyeshadow products to share with you guys, but I realized that I never actually had a chance to review this little palette by Can Make that released earlier this year. This is called the Plump Puku Coordinate Eyes Palette. Doesn't this look like Holly Pocket Toy back in the 90s? I feel like it's the shape. Polly Pocket. <laughs> Polly Pocket. And of course the size. I think this is the tiniest eyeshadow palette that I've ever owned. It's literally like almost the same size as one of the Can Make Cream Cheek blushes. But yeah, so this is called the Plump Puku Coordinate Eyes. Uh, that's a portmanteau of the English word plump and the Japanese word Pukuri. So it's for your under eye tear bags, basically. This is a tear bag specific palette. You have three shades to choose from depending on the intensity that you want for the base color. Um, usually I just layer them all up. So we have like a matte shade here this one is a little bit more shimmery and then this one has more uh, chunky shimmers in it and then the darkest color down here is obviously for you to create that tear back shadow effect with so obviously you don't need like a designated palette per se to create the Egyosal or namida bukuro effect but i will say that having it all in this one tiny compact little palette has just been coming in so handy for me um yeah this little applicator is crap so when i'm applying this from home I will usually switch to a real brush picks up better that way but when I'm on the go like I can't even cap I just use this and make it work somehow yeah I layer up the two base shades on the sides and then I put the shimmery more chunky glitter 
in the center and then sometimes like just a tiny dab on the top lid as well to make everything cohesive and then with an angle brush i draw two lines actually so i'll show you what i mean in a second i draw the first one like super close to my natural lash line and then i kind of like i drag it out um, when I get to the outer edge, as I drag it out, I make the line straighter away from where my actual lash line ends. You can't really tell today because I have the bold red eyeshadow, but if I had a more neutral look on, this is a good technique to kind of like fake or reset your actual lash line to make your eye look larger. And then the second line I will draw in down here for that tear bag shadow effect. And this alone, just the powder, looks really good if I'm just going out in real life. But for the camera, I will often amp up the effect with the Can Make Cream Gel Liner. Sorry, the Can Make Creamy Touch Liner in the shade 09. I think it's called like Darjeeling Pink Tea or something. And yeah, this is a lighter color, so I'm not scared to use it in the tear bag. And also for just a little more definition. And then for eyeliner, I actually had to buy a refill of one of my favorite um, brush tip liquid liners. All of my black liners suddenly decided to run out on me on the same day. So that was super rude, but including this ColourPop ink pot style one, which is the style that I prefer. But since it's gone, I decided to just repurchase the K palette one day tattoo. Um, these names are killing me. Okay, K Palette Real Lasting Eyeliner 24 Hour Waterproof in Super Black. Comes in this packaging, and this is what the pen looks like. Very nondescript, you know, industrial looking. It may not be as cute as some of the liners from other brands, but this is the GOAT formulation, okay, if you're gonna buy a brush tip black liner. This is what I mentioned in my Asian makeup favorites of 2022 video. You know, for a brush tip liner, which usually those go dry on me pretty quickly, this one actually lasts me a long time. Whenever you initially do sense this going a little dry or it starts to get difficult for the product to come out, just run it under warm water for a few seconds and it will be back and good as new. It's like the everlasting gobstopper. Okay, so I did a bunch of steps off camera. I added my lashes, mascara. For blush, I actually pulled out this palette from Estee Lauder. This was their Year of the Tiger special blush palette thing. First time I've used this in a while and I'm reminded of how good it actually is. So I think I want to keep this out and try to use it a little bit more. I also did add some extra glitter from this Glitterly Obsessed Glitter Gel by Colourpop. This is called It's Moi with the Miss Piggy character from the Muppets. It's like super duper chunky and reflective foil glitter pieces in here. I couldn't help myself. This is like my normal look by this point, okay? You guys know the drill. I need to have several layers of glitter and metallics on the lids before I can call a look done. So before I put on my actual lipstick, I wanna try out this new lip scrub that I got from Revlon. It's called the Revlon Kiss Sugar Scrub in 182 Sweet Mint. And as you can see, this one is a special Pikachu design from their recent Pokemon collaboration. Can I be honest with you? I don't think this Pikachu is all that cute. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of this style of drawing. The last collaboration that they had for this product before the Pokemon one was Hello Kitty, and I feel like those designs were a little bit cuter, but unfortunately I didn't get a chance to grab that one. But yeah, I haven't used a lip scrub in a while actually. I used to use the one from Lush all the time back in the day. Part of me is kind of paranoid that lip scrubs make the problem worse because even though they're, they're helping you by sloughing off the dead skin from your lips, obviously, but at the same time, I feel like they're also kind of doing more damage to your lips, like creating more wrinkles in the long run because, you know, it's rough, right? It has a sandy texture, so it can't be like 100% good for your lips, but... Nevertheless, nevertheless, I quite enjoy this upon first impressions. It's not too scratchy, which I like. Let me wipe this off before I apply my lipstick. Are you supposed to wipe off a lip scrub or are you supposed to like leave it on? I feel like with this one, you could technically leave it on because the base is a very kind of nourishing lip balm type of formula but then it's like you can't just leave all the dead skin particles on your lips like that and then I'm gonna move to Probably my favorite lip product of the moment. This is the Rum and Glasting Melting Balm in 07. Actually, no, I want to use 06 
Kaya Fig. Melting Balm is definitely the right descriptor for this because as you can see, it is indeed very melty to the point where the casing gets so dirty so quickly. That's the one drawback of this product. But everything else, the colors, the glossy finish, how nourishing it is for your lips, everything else is a plus in my book. I will say this does feel slightly heavier and thicker on the lips than, you know, like a watery lip tint, for example. You can definitely feel something's there. But for me, that's actually more preferable because I like the extra plump lip effect that this brings me. The only complaint that I have about this is why don't they have it in a classic everyday red color. Like I'm dying for a glossy fresh looking red in a formula that I actually stand. I actually bought all the colors. They have seven in total. Some of them are so similar to each other. It's just it almost seems like a waste. Like why couldn't you switch one out for a classic red color? I have the same comment about the Revlon Jelly Lip Tint, come to think of it, which is another favorite of mine in a similar finish. But anyway, this is my final look. I'm really happy because pretty much everything that I tried today checked out really well. The Maybelline Fit Me Vitamin C Tint Color for the face. I love it. This is like the perfect finish for spring and summer. She Glam Eyebrow Pencil Slash Pen Duo, not too shabby at all, especially for the very affordable price point. Can Make Plumpuku Coordinate Eyes Tear Bag Making Palette. This is pretty much a staple in my makeup bag at this point. The only downside is that this is a limited quantities item. Always a chance that they could re-release this in the future if there's enough demand for it, but it's not guaranteed. And unfortunately, I have a feeling that this might not ever even make it to the international or overseas market. It. The Rum and Glasting Melting Balm, a new favorite of mine as far as a glossy lip formulation goes. This is a great option for those of you who may have been interested in the Revlon Jelly Tint Lip Color that I reviewed a few videos back. This item is unfortunately only exclusive to Asia. If you have an easier time getting access to K-beauty brands such as Rom and I would suggest definitely trying to see if you can get your hands on the Glasting Melting Balms and of course I'll link it down below if I can find it on YesStyle. As a reminder, I do have a little code with YesStyle. It's just very gang in all caps if you want to save a little something off of your order. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!